Well, good morning, everyone. Glad you could be with us and taking on the challenge of implementing the link Skype technology that some of you have used frequently and and some of us are just getting accustomed to. I want to welcome everybody here and keep in mind just a few housekeeping things. Keep your uh, mics on mute until which time you are going to uh, present some information simply because it causes too much feedback and and um, bleed over for others that are trying to listen. Uh, I would suggest you also keep your video turned off until uh, until which time you're going to present. I think that probably uses up too much bandwidth, and so uh, we'll uh, we'll leave the video when you're talking. We'll leave the video portion up to you. If you if you're new to the link, there is the chat box on the left side, and and I encourage you to jot a note in in there if uh, you have a question. And uh, let's see, I'm looking for my agenda. Unless there's any questions, if anybody have any any questions, uh, uh, thank you, Lisa. And we know that indeed you're out there. It's good good to see. We do have a participants list on the screen here. I'm not sure what you see on that end. JW, so do you mind if I interrupt and just yeah. ask if anybody's having audio trouble? That's often the problem we have is not having audio set correctly. So if anybody has audio trouble, and Jerry just left the room, telephone Jerry or John or Blair. Their phone numbers were in the email that came out. But it, since I nobody's typed box. anything in, I assume it's just working type okay. Just type in the chat box. If well, that's true. If they can't hear, but or you can put the number in for them. Uh huh. I don't know those numbers though. <laughs> what you mean? So if you're you having mean? any trouble, put it in the chat box or give those guys a call directly if you're really having trouble. Thanks. Sonia has them memorized. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Apparently, everybody can hear, and in a minute you'll be able to see. So thanks. I just wanted to check. Thank you, Becky. That's why we're just. Uh, a little slow to get started just to make sure everybody is on on board uh, first people I want to thank is Jerry John and Blair for put, being on standby if you are having some trouble remember the attachment that I sent out had all the contact information on there as well as instructions that uh, Becky and others uh, put together to send out and then uh, uh, Jerry put online the the link that I added to that email where you could uh, go in and get a little more detail about using the link Skype some of you will still be Link. Some of you have been pushed the newer Skype. As you know, Microsoft purchased uh, Skype, and so uh, your your uh, uh, instructions will note it that it's calling it Link, but it's Skype, and we'll all get used to using the same terminology very soon. Well, just to review the uh, agenda quickly, uh, the purpose of this session is to overview the analysis of, the, of statewide conditions. And so we're not looking for a lot of detail, nor even though I have an hour and a half blocked off, I don't foresee this meeting lasting uh, near that long. But we do want to, uh, we want to hear what's going on out there. You're our eyes and ears, and we want to, <clears throat> you can help us help you in preparing for this pending drought. And I, uh, in the past, we've had calls that seem to have initiated, and we're hoping that indeed is the case today as well. Uh, so before we get started with Adan Adnan, Adnan, you're getting ready to uh, come online there. Is there any questions at all uh, anybody have? And I would also indicate before uh, before you respond to somebody, give just a short pause, simply because unlike the telephone, this isn't synchronous, and we'll need to uh, you know, just allow enough time for somebody to, to uh, go on. Now, I would suggest if you want to... Uh, uh, say something, if you could put something in the chat box and I'll try to recognize you and I'll help organize the traffic that way if that, if you so desire. So uh, any anything in the chat box there? I've got uh, uh, technical support here checking things. Anybody got anything? Just give you a moment. Can you raise their hand? On the... 
Oh, where's that at? I don't know if they have a feature like that. Uh, yes, it does, but I... Okay. The other, the other suggestion yeah, was you can raise your hand. Well, we're, we're learning on the fly here, too, so forgive me. Uh, 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 the new Skype uh, looks a little different than Lincoln, so we're, we're still getting accustomed to that. Okay, I don't see any hands raised or any uh, uh, interjections here except uh, out state. We do have one around the table. Charlie? I uh, just want to say uh, thank you to everyone for tuning in. Uh, for our new agents out there, uh, I think um, as just want to reinforce what JW had said, Adnan um, and others rely on your reports uh, from what's coming from the ground out there. So I would suggest that I think Adnan is going to be first. And then I think what I'd suggest to JW is instead of confusion is call on the list that's on link or whatever so he knows who's there and go and just ask if you have anything to report and uh, you can say yes I do or no I'll pass that's up to you so anyway thank you to everyone who's here hopefully these having these early calls will avert uh, uh, any dryness out there and, and we'll go on so thanks JW all right adding on I'm here uh, Good morning, everybody. Good morning from Fargo. Um, I asked Jay to put me up first uh, because I have to catch my class at uh, 9.50. And until then, I will be on call to uh, see if there is any questions or I may have to inject something or I may uh, hear. Um, I am going to talk about the process in which the drought monitor, it's a weekly map done by um, National Drought Mitigation Center, USDA, and, and NOAA, and a couple other agencies that puts together. Um, and that map is very important. Uh, how important that is is that uh, the latest Farm Bill Act of 2014, um, it delineates on page 124 uh, about the assistance for losses due to drought. And it is indexed to uh, drought severity that you see on that map. Um, there are four different categories, starting from D0, D1, D2, and D4 is the uh, most uh, severe one. It is called the exceptional drought. For example, uh, some of the, um, the impacts that... Uh, Anand, uh, yes. Anand, this is Becky. Sorry to interrupt, but your desktop isn't showing yet. We can't see the map yet. Did you share your desktop so we can see it? I, I, I haven't shown my desktop, but uh, I can show. Okay. Well, we're all trying to visualize what you're talking about. Okay. So if you don't mind going ahead and doing that. No, no, no problem. <laughs> Thank I, you. I hope you can see it right now. It might be a little small, but... Um, I am sure you have seen uh, U.S. drought monitor map, and currently uh, I am looking at the map as um, about 21 percent of North Dakota is being under moderate drought. Becky, can you see the uh, desktop yet? Yes, we can. Okay. Well, I I'm, I'm going to continue. Um, I am sure you have seen it, and you might want to know how this map is generated and how important that is. It is so important that, for example, um, if a county, it's a county-based um, assistance program, if the county is under D2, um, that county becomes eligible if the county is at least eight consecutive we weeks in a row during the uh, uh, normal grazing periods, and it becomes eligible for certain uh, amount of assistance. If it is uh, D3, for example, uh, D3 being the extreme drought conditions, and it becomes eligible if um, the county is under D3 conditions for at least four weeks, and as the conditions get worse, um, the consecutive week uh, preference gets lower and lower. And I am going to convince with this call that you are not the information end user about this map, and you are the information source. And um, this map is highly subjective. Um, yes, there might be some 
mathematic mathematical formulas that might take into account, but it is it is it depends highly on the 350 local expertise in the United States that it relies on. Uh, for example, every Monday. Um, I gather information using uh, National Weather Service, and sometimes uh, you see me emailing you and asking you, you to make input in your county. And, and thank you very much if you have already um, provided some input. Um, if you haven't, you know that I am relying on your local eyes and ears that you're hearing from the, uh, the sources. Um, that's, I compiled that information and make recommendation to uh, the person who is making this map, which changes every week. And that person who is making this map uh, consider these uh, recommendations very seriously. For example, um, um, D1 might be uh, dealing with some kind of drop, drought damage to crops and the past pastures, and the streams and the reservoirs might be low. Or if the crop pasture losses, likely water shortages are common, we might elevate that to D2. Or major crop losses, widespread water storage and reserv reservoir levels, that we, we might elevate that to D3. Or exceptional and widespread crop losses, uh, we might have to elevate this to D4. And D4 is very rare. We only had. D4 conditions in North Dakota only once, that was in 2006. But again, you are not the information recipient in your field. You are the information source. Um, what kind of information that I am looking from you is not the, uh, the amount that rainfall rece received in your county. Um, I can look at and on center, I can look at the precipitation totals uh, starting from certain dates, and I can look at how um, less that is compared to normal. I know the normal amounts. I may be able to look at, for example, um, soil moisture conditions as I am looking right now. This is um, indicating that the soil moisture conditions are uh, drier, especially to the eastern North Dakota or western North Dakota, might not be as bad. But um, what I am looking from you <coughs> is an anecdotal um, information that I don't see, or people from uh, Washington, D.C. don't see, that you see. For example, um, <coughs> it might be drought-related, fire danger, or burning ban, or low water availability in your reservoirs or dugouts and et cetera. Or you might be seeing some kind of municipal water restrictions in your area that I am not aware. Or you might see some dry vegetation, row crops and pastures, uh, the curling uh, leaves that you might see. Um, or you might see impacts on the livestock, um, blowing dust and debris and its impact on the livestock. Several years ago, we had dust pneumonia that people didn't see or didn't report, but you only saw that in your field. You might see wind erosion. Uh, you might see some economic and social impact in your region that uh, we might want to know about it. I am dealing with um, a court settlement that a farmer in central North Dakota has claimed losses due to the uh, drought conditions. but. Um, that person did not qualify for appropriate uh, assistance. Um, and, and that person or the farmer is taken the uh, insurance company to uh, a court, and they, they just contacted me as a settler. You don't want to get to that point, and, and you want to make sure that your area is represented fairly. So. What I am looking for is that you don't have to wait for me to solicit input from you. If you see anything bad, if you see anything that needs to be uh, take note, I am willing to take that information and be a conduit between you and the drought monitor author for the weekly. And, and together, you and I can help your uh, farmer in your area. So I'm going to stop at this point.
and I'm going to stop sharing uh, my desktop. If you have any question, I am here until 9.50. And thank you very much. Thank you, Adnan. Anybody have any questions at this time? Any observations anybody would like to make before we move on? I'll state first, and then we'll go around the table here. All right, uh, in uh, locally, Tim. Yeah, this is Tim Petrie. I just want to uh, uh, reinforce what Adnan said. You know, we maybe wasn't that dry, but in uh, th this was approved in the last farm bill, but in 2012 and 13 alone, North Dakota, I, I have the numbers back in my office, but we received several million dollars in the livestock sector and forage losses. And so, it. but we have to hit those D statuses, like Adnan said. So, for your county, it's very, very important that you put this information in because uh, that's what USDA uses to determine the amounts, and they have been paying off, and that's the only way they will pay off. So it's very important to get that information to add now. Right. And the, and the other thing to add to Tim is remind your producers out there to keep records. Uh, the LIP, we didn't used to have that. Uh, if they document uh, livestock losses, uh, they just need to document them the day they died, whatever died, whatever losses they have, and just keep a record of those because sometimes these programs come back nine months or 12 months later in, in come into effect. Yeah, that's the case, and, and even for some, uh, uh, Jerry can talk more about this, but for some uh, uh, disease like anthrax that uh, might be caused by drought conditions, then animals are covered more than uh, average losses, and it's a weather-related event, but it's due to anthrax. Normal disease isn't covered on the farm bill, but if it's caused by a weather-related event, it is, and anthrax is one. Right. Heat stress. Heat stress. Others. And the other thing that I'll mention about that, as long as Charlie brought up records, um, in a year like this, the, the impact of records can really be magnified in terms of identifying calls, and it gets to the point where we've got to come in and, and we've got to reduce stocking rates, or we've got to do those things. Uh, having those records, what happens through the calving season, things like that, they can really help out when it comes down to to lightening the pasture load if we need to remove some animals. Not just written records, photos I would encourage too. Okay, good points. Uh, as you could tell from going around the table, I haven't introduced who is sitting in uh, Moral 5A and, and specialists that are in, in the room or in the house uh, include uh, Jerry Stucca, Tim Petrie, Miranda Meehan, Carl Dolan, and myself along with Charlie Stoltenau, uh, providing technical backup support, recording, and notes, uh, which uh, records we just talked about, the, uh, the uh, ever-popular Alan Crawford, who keeps our, rec <laughs> keeps our stories in, in, uh, in presentable form, is, is with us, and of course, uh, Rich Mattern and uh, Becky Koch. Uh, any, any any questions from anyone now? Each time I will pause just a moment to allow opportunity to uh, raise your hand or send in a uh, um, type in the chat box or conversation box. See if you have anything. By the way, uh, uh, before we uh, before we go any further, we are recording this and we'll post it on the drop page, so you'll have a chance or you'll be able to refer others to it that may not have been able to attend. I did receive a few emails of of schedules. We know everyone's schedule is dynamic and, and best laid plans can change with over the weekend and, and so we, we certainly understand uh, that not everyone could, uh, could keep the schedule. We have a nice array of people online and it looks like it's going pretty well so far. Uh, if you're having any, uh, any challenges with this, uh, again put it in the chat box or uh, send us an email on the side. We do have our cell phones here. We can check that make sure that everyone is is having a, a reasonable a reasonable experience uh, if, uh, so before we go on I would uh, uh, set the table as it were we'll we'll go around the state and look for some uh, quick, quick reports 
and we'll just do it clockwise starting with the in the northwest northeast southeast and end up with the with the southwest so that's that's my plan at this point before going there any more comments around the table from anyone or anybody out state uh, seeing none is anybody from the northwest that would like to give us a quick update of what's happening and uh, again I would remind you that once a, a feature has been has been shared. There would be no no need to continue to repeat that. Uh, to repeat that, just try to bring some new information online. That helps us manage this time allotted to this and keeps things uh, keeps things moving along. Who from the Northwest would like to uh, speak up? Your silence is deafening. <laughs> Morning. This is Chris. Can you guys hear me? Sure can. Go ahead, Chris. Okay. Thank you. Um, we, we've gotten a little bit of rain this weekend. Um, I just looked at the total. We got about a tenth of an inch and mine it. And as I've been going about um, doing some sampling on that, the, the top eight, ten inches, six inches or whatever, that seems to be pretty darn dry. But once you get down into the subsoil, I've been kind of impressed or surprised by the amount of subsoil moisture there actually is. So stuff on top looks kind of bad but we still got some good reserves in our subsoil moisture it appears thank you Chris anybody from the Northwest like to add to that Danielle anybody I see you're on from out Williams got anything you're out in the Extreme Northwest. Unless they're muted, I see that they're muted. I see you are all muted, so if you are talking, we're not hearing. <laughs> she, she says <laughs> nothing. No, I think what Chris said is correct. Okay. Oh, I see your comment now. Thank you, Danielle. Danielle. One more time. Anyone else from the northwest as we slide east? Anything up in the Botno, McHenry, Pierce area? Well, and I guess uh, looking at the map, that now includes Sheridan Wells, Eddie Foster County. Anything from the Carrington Research Extension Center? I think I have it unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you for uh, uh, logging <laughs> in, is, Carl. This is Carl at Carrington. Uh, two items three items to share first would be the it appears the water table in the streams out in this area is is what it normally is uh, about a month or so ago these streams were dry as the frost came out of the ground now these streams are filled up unfortunately the water's not moving through the streams they're just there so there is some I uh, reinforce what Chris is saying it looks like there's some groundwater out there we do see a lot of evaporation occurring in from the soils so in other words those saline areas um, are getting larger in size and whiter in color so that's something I haven't seen for quite a few years uh, John Duvetter and I wrote a news release last week talking about uh, dugout ponds and and the need to test them this year especially if they're runoff dugout ponds that are filled from from runoff water because we haven't had much runoff to fill these up this year and other since there's a lot of groundwater evaporation perhaps the other stock ponds need to be tested as well for total dissolved solid content to see if there is uh, too much minerals in these waters and that's about it Thank you, Carl, and I appreciate you, that you introduce yourself as you go on and give some report. Uh, somebody like to respond around the table here? It looked like there was a question. Yeah. Tim, are we? On, as yes, like, Lou. Carl, listen, Tim, are the pastures greening up at all, or are they still pretty brown? Uh, the pastures are greening up. They really changed yesterday. Uh, however. You know, two inches tall really isn't that much. They haven't grown much. Where it's more protected, the grasses might be four inches tall. But in general, it's a you know, cattle are trying to graze green grass, but there's not much out there for them to pick at right now. Uh, I think we're a little ways off before turnout time myself, but I'm not the expert in that one. I'm sure it's nice not to be calving in the mud, but the timing is so going to be so critical here. 
Anyone else from the Northwest in the county that would like to? Raquel Root, isn't that ironic? Sorry. <laughs> Raquel, did you have? Mouser is rising. Chat box. Okay. Chat box. Oh, I'm looking at your chat box. Mouse River is rising again to threatening levels in the lower Sears River Basin. Interesting. Canadian water? <laughs> <laughs> Must be, yeah. Okay. okay. Any any other observations from the Northwest? Yes, You're all welcome to, to add to the conversation. And thank you for those that, that have. Going once. Twice. All right, thank you, Northwest. We move to the Northeast District. Northeast District, roll that Toner Calvillier down into Steel Trail County. Anybody like to respond there? I guess I need to see this on. Our list of participants scrolls way off the screen, so I have a tough time seeing who's, who all is there. But we can do that. Well, I have to be ambidextrous to do that. <laughs> Left okay. and right brain. I have. It's Alyssa from Trail. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Go ahead. You're yes. A little echoey, so if you could be a little closer to your speaker, uh, sure. otherwise we I'll can hear you. Rest. It's a little better. Um, so a couple weeks ago, we had some visibility issues, actually, from blowing dirt out of town. Um, but over the uh, 18th um, weekend, we had about half an inch of rain, so it's uh, cooled down a little bit um, with that rolling dirt, but we definitely could use some moisture to keep these crops going. Use that? Thank you, Alyssa. Anyone else from the Northeast like to uh, chime in, like to add? We understand from the chat box, and I'm sure and Anticipating all of you can see that that while the Mouse River is evacuating some Canadian water, indeed the uh, Devil's Lake has has dropped. Anybody from the Devil's Lake area want to uh, add to that? We see that Paige has added a Ward County update. The received heavy snowfall, one to fifteen inches. So I'm sure that was welcome. Thank you. One more time for the Northeast. Anyone from the Northeast District like to add to the discussion? Um, this is, Go this ahead. is Caitlin, Caitlin Hain in Nelson County, um, just east of Devil's Lake. Um, I think that there is fairly good moisture here. It's somewhat dry, I mean, compared to like last year. But we've got a half inch of rain about a week ago. I think there's more rain tonight, hopefully. Um, so I think we're far enough off of Devil's Lake where we're still getting some moisture. I don't think um, a lot of producers, crop producers, are super worried about the moisture yet. It is somewhat dry, but um, I haven't talked to any livestock yet, which is something that after this call I've realized I should. <laughs> um, but that's just kind of all that I have to say about here. Thank you, Caitlin. Uh, nice to have you add that in information. And certainly we acknowledge that, and now this is uh, is an alert, not an alarm. We It's, it's too soon to tell. And uh, Mother Nature's in charge, and things can change very, very quickly. Let's move on to the southeast. Anyone from the southeast like to uh, begin? Julianne. Julianne, I see you've typed in. Are you uh, at your computer, or uh, can you do you have access to audio? She's a little more. Remind me which county she is. A more. can keep up with everybody. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> we hope you find your voice and find it soon. She reports uh, it's been dry around here too. Two weeks of burn bans. Uh, you can see evidence of water levels are down, and uh, would welcome some rain. As as I've driven through just the the 
this country here from Cass over to my home country. Uh, the last two weeks has been a lot of seeding done. There's a lot of small grains, corn, soybean in the ground. And uh, my neighbor in church on Sunday indicated that while he's been out doing some working, the frost just came out of the ground for him. So he's he's avoided putting in the ground. He's a smaller operator, so he doesn't have to have to get in there quite as soon. But uh, yeah, it's, it, around this country, a lot of it's turned black and seed is in the ground. I haven't stopped looking to see if anything's poking its head through, but you can't row it yet, so I would assume that cold temperatures have, have uh, retarded any, any growth there. Anyone else from the southeast in the Jamestown area, Alicia, uh, or if we get down into Emmons County, anybody like to add anything? Um, this is Alicia. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. All right. Um, well, I pretty much don't have it more to add than what everyone else has been talking about. In Jamestown, I think we got about two tenths of rain. I think it was last week or maybe ten days ago now. Um, I ran the Rogers area. We got about four tenths, so it seemed like the farther east you got, the more rain there was. Um, but it's kind of interesting the attitudes of farmers. It seems like some guys are kind of welcoming a little bit of a drier spring because they're not fighting the water. And so some people, you know, have that attitude, oh, well, it's always going to rain in June, so, you know, this is great. And then some people are really worried because they've, um, you know, they typically it's always so wet in the spring that they're worried that it's, it's setting up for a really dry year. Because it also seems like whenever we get rain, it follows the same pattern. So they're hoping that we, we do get rain throughout the summer and it doesn't keep missing us. So it's kind of interesting how I think people have a little bit different attitudes towards the drier weather. Thank you for those comments. Anyone else from the southeast can add to the discussion? Yeah, this is Kelsey Eglin from Emmons County. Um, about 10 days ago throughout the county we had just some rain, I mean, in areas under uh, half an inch to an inch, I mean, and it was very welcome. Um, we, I'm kind of going to go along the same thing as Leisha. I mean, the attitudes of the farmers, they're, you know, we do have some, some moisture in the ground, the subsoil moisture, but um, we are welcome, welcoming the rain as much as we can, too. So. Well, certainly some of the financial strains of this past year have, have added to some of the concerns, but... I guess as, as agrologists, we're perennial worriers, knowing that uh, Mother Nature is uh, going to pull the has the final card, has the final say here. Thank you for those comments. One more chance from the southeast. Anybody else like to add? This is Farah. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. This is far from Central Grasslands. Um, we had about 73 100s uh, last weekend, so uh, quite different from Jamestown, which is not very far from us up north. Um, that being said, there's one case of dust pneumonia I know that has occurred already in, in the area here. Um, and those saline soils that Carl talked about, we see a lot of that here too. But the farmers, you know, I've been talking to, they, they don't seem that concerned yet. Um, they're glad for the rain we did get last weekend, and they're going about planting uh, pretty normally. Corn seems to be going in, I think, uh, this week and the next week. <clears throat> Very good. Thank you for that. And that brings us to the, the southwest. Anybody from the southwest like to start? I know that you did receive some snow, especially in the southwestern, extreme southwestern Bowman County, at anywhere from uh, 5 to 15 inches of snowfall, which I'm sure was welcome for the, the pastures. And the moisture situation doesn't sound too critical there yet. That was a nice drink for them. This is Becky in Dunn County. Go ahead, Becky. Good morning. Um, you know, we've been having, I guess, this weekend we got 3,500 so far, and it's still raining. Um, it's kind of been a nice slow uh, soaker rain we've been able to get, which is much needed for our pastures and everything. Um, you know, we still have farmers that it's dry, we have dust blowing around, but yet they go out and they find a wet pocket, and it's not even, 
you know, in a low spot and uh, they're getting stuck. Um, so we still have some reserve moisture, but I do know a lot of our uh, ranchers are starting to get concerned for our hay and uh, pastures. Um, we've been, like everybody else, in a burn ban for about a month now, and uh, we've really been watching that a lot um, just with a lot of the wildfires and stuff that's been around here. Um, but, you know, we're having a lot of saline seeps um, showing up from the moisture that we've had the last couple years. Um, so there's a lot of guys getting concerned about that. Uh, so far, nobody's in panic mode, just everybody watching it. Thank you, Becky. Next from the Southwest. This, this is, is oh, go, go ahead, ahead, Jackie. This is Jackie in Morton, and we continue to be under a burn ban. Um, we've gotten a little, few showers, but very little. I would say most of the small grains are in the ground, um, and I suppose maybe this week, if it warms up, maybe some corn will go in. Um, we sure could use some moisture. Um, most of our guys have lots of feed available, and so their concern now is that the pastures, um, so that we get some rain so they can get started. Otherwise, that's about it. Go ahead, Rick. Okay. Um, we're probably not an awful lot different. One of the things that we're seeing here, we've had farmers that have backed off on planting um, because of the fact that our soil temperatures don't seem to be that warm yet. They're making such serious ruts down the field, and and then they're getting to the – they're. Basically, the frost is keeping them from sinking a tractor in in a lot of places, which is odd. Um, the top two, three inches are dry, but we have, I would say, a really pretty adequate subsoil moisture um, all the way down. We did some soil testing here um, at our office and uh, the SCD, and from probably three inches to 24 inches, we aren't really seeing any dry spots. So. I would agree that pastures are maybe our biggest concern. We've had some pretty large fires in our area as well, and um, the grass just is, seems to be off to a real slow start. Thank you, Rick and Jackie. Anybody else from the Southwest? Uh, this is Julie Kramlick from Adams County. Um, I just can say pretty much everything that everybody has said. Um, the moisture in the ground, we are pretty. Um, um, we've got good moisture. Um, the only thing is concerned is the grass. Um, it's kind of purple out here. Um, with this past week, we've gotten down to 12 at night. Um, that's kind of hurt the grass growing. Um, so the more concern is for the um, livestock producer getting those cows out to pasture. Um, it's just not growing. It's kind of green, but it's just not growing very well. To be expected. Thank you for those comments. Anybody else in the Southwest? Going once, going twice. Anybody else at all out in, out in state that might have heard something that it triggered uh, a comment that you'd like to add at this point. Uh, just one thing, JW, maybe, and Miranda's here and Carl's here, uh, just to remind or talk about is turnout time. Uh, right now, what's Miranda or Carl, do you have your weather recommendations on height or what we should be looking for when they're looking at turnout time? In general, a turnout, you want to wait till your grasses are at that third third leaf stage. So that would be in normally that's early June, but you're just gonna have to watch and we, let's see what precip precipitation does. Right. So if they have feed re um, feed reserves, I mean that's that's kind of the decision is what shape are they gonna keep their pasture lands in? I mean, if they turn out too early, we know that uh, can have some pretty devastating effects long term, even short term. So. Um, what type of information would you, what would you like out there? Are there certain things that you'd like to be able to put into your local county newspapers or things to get out? Are there some things you'd like us to uh, turn out for you? Charlie, must have the agenda. Go ahead. 
Build us a fence that's going to keep cows in once they get their first taste of a two-inch tall flat, uh, grass of uh, blade of grass. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I agree with you, Charlie. We've had, I mean, we've seen a lot of cattle that are out on pastures already, and it's because it, I don't know. There's a different genetics in cows, but you can't keep them in. And four wire fences do not keep cows in once they get some grass in their their stomach, some green grass. But I agree that we, we are turning out way too early. Uh, we know we're going to suffer from the consequences here, too. But um, I see very few cows that are – they're still being supplemented, but they're, there's a lot out on grass already. Well, you make a very good point. <clears throat> Reality always trumps science when it comes to this, this time, of the, time of the year. Anybody else around the table like to make a response? Add, add to that? Jerry, you thinking it? So, yeah, no, just a couple things perhaps. I mean, Carl and Miranda are right. I, you can try and delay turnout, and because it's been dry this, this spring, you kind of feel like you want to get them out of your hair and out of the yard. But the longer you feed them, even supplemental, I know they're going to eat some of that grass out there, but they will eat some hay besides, especially if it's good quality. Um, so that's at least takes some of the pressure off the pastures. And that's really the main goal here is to protect the forage and pasture base. Really, that's what we're talking about. The only other thing is, on the flip side, if you keep them in the lot longer, and Farah referenced dust pneumonia, in some respects, there's really no such thing as dust pneumonia. Dust can be a tr contributor. Temperature changes can be a contributor to uh, bacterial and viral infections getting to the lung. Uh, and that can happen as we get dry conditions in the lot or even sometimes even on uh, on pasture situations where you got a lot of dirt blowing and it overloads the defense mechanisms and it contributes to to some pneumonia in those calves. There may be other conditions that are also contributing to it. So just a couple things to keep in mind uh, about these calves going out early and and in dry conditions. Supplemental uh, feed is still an important part of of uh, taking care of those cows. And I think to remember on those turnout days, that's for native range. So if you have cool season pastures, brome, crested, Kentucky bluegrass, that you can graze those earlier. You know, Miranda, that's a great point because I know Streeter is carrying out some issues trying to control Kentucky bluegrass or what we call June grass, and they're doing it by turning cattle out early so that June grass doesn't take over some of those pasture situations. And I know there's a lot of pasture in North Dakota that has become overwhelmed with June grass. I just, uh, this is far, I just sent a comment on that um, with our early turnout here and we'll be doing a press release on that too for, for the bluegrass dominated pastures. Good, so. thanks Farah. Hey Farah, are you gonna confine that to bluegrass pastures. I, I think it would be good to expand that to native range pastures and, and if that release is going out to get some of that perspective in there as well. So it, uh, those releases cover a big area so we can get a good mix of, of pasture types in that release. That'd be great. Farah, this is JW. You've been doing some nice work out there training agents on forage, the value of forage, how to interpret forage values. Uh, and I, I didn't think to ask you in advance, I'm putting you on the spot perhaps, but is there anything else going on at the uh, grasslands, straighter grasslands, that might be pertinent to the discussion here today, even though it's it's research that's in the, in the making? You know, I think the, the bluegrass study is interesting. I just put that on the comment, too. It's, it's interesting. Um, the rest of the pastures I look at, um, you know, that have not had a real thick stand of old dead bluegrass, they're like uh, what others have commented, uh, puny, kind of small, green, but not tall. But these bluegrass pastures under that layer, that thick layer of old stuff, you know, it retains quite a bit of moisture, and that grass is tall under there. So um, it's actually a good time to turn out on those heavy, heavy dominated uh, just bluegrass pastures. So um, it, it looks like those are taller under that duff. 
Um, other than that, um, you know, with watching hay prices, I guess, and seeing how that may shift in turn this year if, if resources get narrower and um, hay prices may subsequently go up. Very good, Farah. Thank you. I would like to move into uh, anticipated programming needs, uh, starting with some of our currently available drought related programming information. So while you're thinking about that, one last call for any comments out state or here in the room that are pertinent to the discussion as we prepare to talk about programming. You know, JW, I'll just jump in here again a little bit, I guess, and Carl can too. There, there's really no problem. <laughs> some, for some of us, it's very non-traditional, but dry lotting cows entirely. I mean, if it stays dry and we maybe need to think about dry lotting those cows and diets can be formulated to meet the needs of those cows that are lactating and the calves as well and so that's always an option if it if you can uh, carry it out. Carl? Yeah I guess that really comes down to last year was a wonderful year for grass growth and hopefully there's some grass that's still out there and, and in the yards. I see Lisa made a comment in the little box there about people coming to our hay list looking for feed supplies and, and if it's dry other places may, we may just want to do a reality check on what our weather conditions pending might be before we unload a bunch of that hay. But if we've got it there's nothing wrong with feeding it now and some dry logging those cows. It's a, it's all cool. From the Ag Communications side, the hay list is up and going, and they've already reviewed a lot of the drought materials that are there, and we as specialists need to, to review those. We have a lot of information here, and frankly, a lot of it really hasn't changed uh, as far as recommendations, but we'll, uh, there, there probably will be some updating going on. If it's obsolete, it'll be removed. If it needs a major revision, some of our new faculty will be uh, be rewriting them and taking authorship leadership on those and so if you're seeing some a need for something or uh, what we've had in the past why it's good information we missed the mark because uh, there was really something else you would like to know please pass that information on to, to all the specialists we could we could uh, benefit from that uh, hearing your feedback anybody like to respond to comments about what is currently available as Sonia put in the box, uh, she gets the credit for updating the drought webpage, but we really do need your feedback on is that the information you need? Is it up to date? Granted, most of this stuff was done in 2012, but still we'd really appreciate it if your name's on it to review it and just make sure it's still accurate. Or are there obvious gaps? Are we missing something? Why don't you pull the website up? Well, that's okay. We can see that. Uh, Sonia, wasn't there a typo? It's D-R-O-U-G-H-T. I thought I saw a typo where you typed it in there, but maybe I'm just too far away from the screen. But yes, we would really appreciate your feedback on any needs in the website. And feed list, for you newbies, you've known this all along, but for the other staff is remember, producers can enter information themselves now. They don't have to go through a county agent. Linda McCaw here in our office, that's my mouse, oh. <laughs> reviews, Sorry. reviews all of them. It's moderated so we don't have any, you know, junk. Nobody can really goop it up. So it is moderated before anything can go live from a producer or somebody who wants it. We're on the wrong piece. No. Oh. It's here. It's just ag.ndsu.edu slash drought. Ag.ndsu. Oh, I'm just looking at the screen. Can you all pull up the drought website on your own computers? Drought. Yeah. You need the www in front of it. So do you have suggestions on what should be featured? It already, to me, sounds like we should focus on this turnout, because that seems like the hot issue. So Ellen's taking notes here, I assume. She's got a news release half written in her head. 
<laughs> We've been working on several, actually. Oh, okay. So this is what everybody sees. Yeah. Yeah, this is far again. I just have a quick question. Is it is it too early to be thinking about nitrate toxicity issues that might result or um, questions on those? Um, well, really far, I guess. I, I, in terms of from forage crops, uh, yes. I mean, you still could have some leftover hay or forages that could cause you issues. Um, and then, of course, th there can be water sources, but um, I don't know that we have a great deal of nitrate issues in our waters unless it gets really dry and then we run into some other total dissolved solids issues as well. Um, I was just thinking with the drought, um, you, can, so you can bring on nitrate toxicity and some uh, you know, especially cereal grains and that. Um, yes. If they're using it in throttle, so I don't. It might be too early to put on. Yes. Put out something on that. Like yep. Down, down the road. Perhaps. Yeah, certainly later, Farah. Any more comments regarding the present drought? Drought list. You should be able to see it up on the screen at this time. Did you share the screen? Did you click share the desktop? Um, I don't know how to use the share on this. Uh, you have to go back to Skype. <laughs> Bear with us. I'm learning how to run this too. We're trying to click share on that right, screen. Right one. There you go. Okay. Now click, click on the screen. Not the video to the right, the third one. Yeah. There you go. And now present yeah, desktop. Okay. And now go back to. Or have you all pulled it up on your own computers already so we don't need to worry about it? I'm trying to learn on the fly here, too. I don't see it. Just well, go down and you click you on have your, to open your. Left. You have to open your screen after. So you want me to go here? No, mm -hmm. just go to Chrome. There. So any suggestions on what type of resources you would like to see that maybe aren't there? Or are we just kind of ahead of the game? Sonia figured out how to make that drought map automatically update when they update it. Took her a while, but thank you, Sonia. So whenever you go there, you know it's the most up-to-date map. I don't know how often they release those. It's, re okay. it's released every Thursday morning about 8 o'clock, but it's as of Tuesday of the week. So Adnan does all his work on Monday, sends it to Nebraska. They do it mon late Monday and Tuesday morning at or yeah, they do the work Tuesday, but not released till Thursday morning. And, and so that's why we've historically had drought calls on Mondays, so we could get those yes. the latest information to Adnan, so he can update the maps. Good to know. No information. Heard a heard a click out there. Is somebody trying to speak? Probably just left the call. Oh, this is not okay. built here. Well, I don't want to rush you. I want to give you a chance. Does anybody like to respond to the last, in question, the last question regarding uh, anticipated uh, drought needs? Next call. Yeah, you should probably schedule the next call right away. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it should be on Monday. Well, <laughs> hearing none, at least we can start thinking about the, uh, the next call. Is there, uh, well, as you heard, there's good reason for Mondays. Is there a reason to try to get it on a day other than Monday? Please speak up now. And hey, then... Uh, Lisa. Go ahead, Lisa. Hey, I uh, put in the chat pod that it seems like water issues and uh, particularly blue-green allergy issues have been perennial issues the last three, four, five years. And I know that Roxanne isn't on staff, but who do we go to for those water issues? Is 
um, maybe we move away from blue green algae or still have them, but other issues as well. Well, Lisa, you, you, you got a number of, of um, specialists here. One is if you're looking on the toxicology stuff, Dr. Mostrom at the diagnostic lab is is more than willing to help anybody field calls or, or things on, on those types of issues. If we're looking at general water, I think Miranda Meehan is one. The other one is Tom Shear. Tom is actually our water um, specialist uh, for the extension system. So, um, and what what am I missing here, Lisa? What else do you need? I don't know. I was just generally asking uh, because it seems like I field some of those questions from staff and producers, and I know that Roxanne had put together a pretty nice presentation on blue green algae, but I just didn't know who we were to go to. To be honest with you, I didn't know if those are questions that. Tom answered, or we should direct maybe towards Dr. Stucka or right. well, Diagnostic Lab, kind of where to go. Right, That's and, and, wondering. and the animal health issues, uh, really, Dr. Stucka is the one who's kind of the uh, the go-to person here, and um, he'll also look at referring them where they need to go, but if people have direct testing questions, the Diagnostic Lab can handle a lot of that. Okay. So I guess I would be not surprised if we don't have some issues there. It might actually be the first ones we see, aside from the pasture turnout thing. Um, you know, I, I don't know that any of us really thought we would see blue-green algae issues, and I know they had them up in Ward County area and in the south central part of the state last year. Um, you know, I, just, I don't know whether they'll be prevalent or not, but I think history tells us that if you've had that problem once, you might have it again. So I was just thinking ahead, I guess, a little bit. Thanks for those comments, Lisa. And, uh, yes, you are thinking ahead, and that's that's great. But speaking of thinking ahead, is uh, we have a new resource now that you're all available. Miranda Meehan on board and brings a, a whole slate of skills to to the table here, and and we're all learning about how she fits into our programs. So. Uh, I would challenge you to uh, get on the phone and call her or think about how her skill set might play into that. And we're extremely pleased to have her on board and anxious to, anxious to put her to work. Now, previously to the last comment, I had asked about future programming, or I'm sorry, future uh, conference calls. Has anybody got anything they'd like to offer? On that, uh, it's been suggested Mondays has a a, a time factor that that probably you are into your uh, your scheduling as well as the drought monitor. And how frequently? Two weeks from now? You thinking? Just trying to get a general consensus. So we don't have to do a doodle poll every time. Well, it's supposed to hit eighty <laughs> this week, and I don't see much. Maybe was it Sunday, Wednesday? Possible. Okay. Well, I haven't muted the mic so you can hear some casual discussion going around the room here. But how about out state? I see a few of you have dropped off. So you're, you're satisfied with what you've pulled so somebody far? Off yeah, somebody, somebody fell off there. <laughs> uh, I hope you're okay. Uh, just another example of why to keep the mics muted in case something uh, happens in your office. Several of them are saying every couple of weeks. Yeah, I think. Okay, yeah. we're trying to read the comments now. They're coming across every two weeks would be good, especially if newer agents. Seems to be a general agreement for that. And so is this time frame as, as uh, uh, fit most people? I'm looking around the room here. Gen see general nods. We can plan for Monday mornings about 9 o'clock. So that's where we're leaning. Uh, going once, going twice. You see Chris's comment there. He said there's a Soil science agent training for May 11th, 15th. Is that going to get in the way of that? Okay, I don't have the calendar in front of me. Chris, uh, you want to speak to that since you're you made the comments? Good to know. Uh, yeah. Sure. Um, th this is all uh, out west. Um, that whole week, we're we're going to have uh, some soil trainings for our county agents. 
So any time that week, um, they're going from about 9 in the morning or 9.30 in the morning to like 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So, um, you know, if we did it early in the morning, that probably would work. But um, just letting you guys know that um, I have a number of county agents committed for every day that week for these trainings. Is it 11th Monday? Mm -hmm. the and what time does that start on Monday the 11th? Uh, like 9.30. Oh, yes. Okay, at the station? Um, so one's in Minot, one's in Carrington, one's in Towner, one's in Williston, one's in Hedinger. So which is that on the 11th where are you going to be? Minot. So would it be possible to start your meeting with a 9 o'clock drop conference call and, and just go from your office and... You guys, that probably that that would probably be doable. Yeah. Would, would you be uh, up for the, taking the leadership on that? Yeah, um, I, I got the big meeting room checked out, and we got the computer and all that sort of stuff, so we should be able to uh, call in for that. Sure. Uh, we'll just have you go first, and we'll accommodate your schedule. Thank you for accommodating ours. Any yep. other comments out there? I'm looking around the table. Carl, go ahead. Hey, Chris, at your trainings, are you going to go out and do a whole bunch of soil cores? So you're saying at the end of the week we'll have a pre pretty good con idea about uh, subsoil conditions at all those locations? We, we should. Morning stuff's going to be classroom, and the afternoon is going to be a road trip and uh, digging soils. Um, I'm not going to have a bu big bucket auger going down six feet, if that's what you're wondering. But, yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll be uh, digging some holes and... Uh, uh, going down a couple of feet here and there throughout the area. So, yeah, we should um, have a good I idea of what that subsoil moisture is anyways. Yeah, that'd be awesome. You can share that, share that information as you go. And like I said, this is more uh, northwest and southwest district stuff. Very good. Thanks. Anybody else have something coming up that would be uh, you'd like to mention at this time since we do have just a couple of minutes? You're uh, obviously tuned in to hour-long meetings. It's been just, just about an hour. Everybody's on track. Anything else for the good of the order? Anything else? Well, then I think you can put on your calendars that the next meeting will be, it'll be 9 o'clock on Monday, May 11th. Shame on me. I walked off without my calendar, but I used to have it on my desk right in front of me to look at. So it's uh, 9 o'clock, Monday, May 11th. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, give us some feedback on how this link Skype conference went. If there were some weaknesses or some things that, that didn't suit you, uh, shoot Becky or me an email. Let's see if there's ways that we can fine-tune it. Otherwise, I would guess next week we'll probably have fewer people sitting around the table and more people calling in from their desk.